This is the multi-voice text-to-speech podfic reading of In Your Memory, We Never Existed by Arthurian Avalon. November 1987 Remus has a tattoo. Just one and Sirius doesn't know about it. He got it September 1, 1981, and it sits on the junction of his hip and reaches up to his side, the most essential bit of it all sitting just below his navel. It's the only one he's ever gotten, and probably the only one he'll ever get. After the events of October 31, 1981, he tried to remove it with magic, maybe it would have worked if it wasn't a muggle tattoo, but the ink stayed firmly on his hip. Remus begged for the wolf to scratch at it, to remove it from his body, but Mooney stayed stubborn and kept it there, new scars surrounded it, but never over it. But now, as Sirius Black stands in his kitchen, drinking a cup of tea with a five-year-old Harry on his hip, he's quite glad it's still there. A reminder of what was a memory, something pleasant to distract him from the events before he turned 21. Sirius spent two years in Azkaban before Remus came to pick Harry up from the Weasley household, and an awfully familiar rat was the newest addition to the family. He'd wrenched the animal from young Percy's hands and stunned it. Molly had yelled and Percy had cried but once Remus explained that the rat was no ordinary garden rat, she was ushering him out the door, begging to get the thing out. Sirius was released a few days later, under Veritaserum he told the events of that fateful night, and was deemed a free man. Remus took him back home with him, to Harry and they've lived here since. Exchanging friendly conversation and doing the dishes side by side, reading to Harry together before he's gone to bed. It's all very comfortable and Remus should be content. He is not. For two years he stayed silent. They don't talk about what they used to be. Remus supposes it hurts too much to remember James and Lily so he doesn't pressure Sirius. He doesn't bring it up. He follows his lead and pretends like they were never anything more than friends. Which is why Remus is glad the tattoo stayed. So he has a reminder that it was real. That it was all real. The loving the tender moments between them but also the screaming, and fighting and kissing in the rain after Remus storms out of the house in a rage, cursing each other's names at 2 a.m. But he keeps his mouth shut, and he doesn't say anything, not wanting to interrupt the comfortable space they've created for themselves. Sirius turns around and spots Remus where he is leaning against the doorway. Remus notices Harry's sleeping face, and he points towards the attic where Harry's room is. Spacious and all to himself. When Remus became Harry's guardian, he originally had the one spare bedroom in the small cottage, but once Sirius moved in, Remus suggested the attic and even though Sirius protested and said he'd just sleep on the couch as Padfoot, Remus cleared the attic out anyway and decorated it for Harry he even had stairs installed so a three-year-old didn't have to risk himself going up a ladder every day. Sirius nods and walks towards the doorway. He has to turn sideways to squeeze past Remus, and Remus stops breathing at the split second of close proximity before Sirius is out into the open floor again and heading towards the stairs for the attic. Remus breathes out again and makes the short for maybe five-step walk to the living room, where his book lays, discarded on the couch, a piece of paper sticking out to mark his page. He sits down and opens it. Three pages in. Sirius comes back downstairs and sits on the other end of the couch. Remus can feel him staring as he reads and after another two pages, he places his bookmark back in and closes the book with a hook. He turns towards Sirius who doesn't even bother looking away to pretend he wasn't staring. Instead, he holds Remus's eye unwaveringly and Remus tries not to make it obvious that his heart feels like it's going to beat out of his chest staring into those eyes gray in a reflection of dark storm clouds. When did you say school starts up for Harry? Sirius asks quietly after a long pause. Next week, Remus replies. Wizarding children generally didn't go to school before Hogwarts, but there are a few open that are run by, mostly muggle-born or half-blood, witches and wizards that teach the basics of the wizarding world, English and maths. Sirius thought it was strange to send him but Remus told him he will be damned if Harry goes to school not understanding basic maths. There's a pause before Remus sighs. T, he asks, standing. Please. Sirius replies and follows him into the kitchen. Remus flicks his wand at the kettle and takes out two mugs, 
Sirius leans against the counter opposite him and watches him. Remus can feel his gaze as he tracks him. You're staring, he states after he feels like Sirius will burn a hole straight through him if he doesn't stop. No, I'm not. Sirius lies and Remus looks over his shoulder at him and raises an eyebrow. I can feel it, he argues and Sirius rolls his eyes. Werewolf abilities, he grumbles and Remus barks out a laugh. I can recall a time you were very grateful for these werewolf abilities. He remarks back and it takes him a while to process what he said and when he does he claps a hand over his mouth and spins around to face Sirius, wide-eyed, an apology on his tongue. You remember? Sirius asks, his tone surprised. The apology gets lodged in Remus's throat and his hand slips from his mouth. He stands there looking at Sirius his mouth opening and closing around words that never make it past his lips. I was going half insane here Remus, I'd convinced myself I made it up, that it was never real. Remus stands there shell-shocked for possibly a moment too long before he finds the words to reply. What? He asks dumbly into the quiet room. The kettle clicks behind him and neither of them makes a move to grab it. Did I? Sirius asks, now looking worried. Did I make it up? Remus feels his heart reach out towards Sirius, and now he feels so. Fucking. Guilty. Remus thought Sirius didn't want to be with him, wanted to put it all behind him, when he just didn't know if any of it was real. Remus feels his eyes sting and his vision becomes blurry with tears. He blinks and they drop down onto his face. Remus? Sirius asks worryingly. I'm sorry, I didn't. He gets up and makes his way towards Remus, standing in front of him. He reaches out and holds his arms. I'm sorry, don't cry, please. It was real, Sirius. He chokes out in a whisper and there's a flicker of a smile at the corner of Sirius's mouth but then it disappears and Sirius's eyebrows fro. He pulls away letting his hands drop and Remus knows a fight's coming next. He knows it as well as he knows the day is long, and he prepares himself. The why? Sirius trails off, shaking his head. Why did you stay away? Well, we weren't exactly on the best terms during the war, were we Sirius? But you let me believe it was nothing but my imagination. I convinced myself you never, we never, that I was just reaching for something happy. I didn't know what else to do Sirius, Remus says exasperatedly. You came here and you said nothing about us, nothing, I thought I was doing good by following your lead. I said nothing because I didn't know if we were real, Sirius exclaims. Well, how was I supposed to know that? Remus yells and Sirius falls silent. Remus sighs and casts a silencing charm, unwilling for Harry to hear any of this. You didn't talk to me, Sirius. You spent the first few months barely coming out of your room and by the time you did, there was nothing and even when you started talking about Hogwarts, you never talked about us. Yes I do, you're in every memory I've told. No, Sirius, you never talked about us, together, alone. It's always with James or with Peter. Remus pauses. So what was I supposed to think, exactly? That you still loved me? That you wanted to be with me? How? Yes. Yes, that was exactly what were you supposed to think. When have I ever done anything but love you? You left, Remus shouted. You left, Sirius. Maybe you remember the fight we had, three days before Halloween. I took a walk to cool my head and I come back and you weren't there. Then the next thing I'm hearing about you is that you've been arrested for the betrayal of Lily and James. I left, Sirius says darkly. Because you did first. Remus scoffs. No, no, you don't get to turn this around on me. I was always going to come back to you, you knew that. No, Remus, I really didn't. The only talking we ever did was shouting at each other. We didn't look at each other. We were barely intimate and when we were it was. Angry, bruise-ridden and guilt-filled. Remus thinks, finishing off his sentence. I remember. Sirius rubs his hands down his face. My point is, I'd figured you'd reached your end, that it all became too much for you, and it was. No, Remus tries to interrupt. It was. We could barely be in the same room as each other, Remus. Too much was better than nothing at all, Remus says firmly. And that's what I had in the end, wasn't it? Remus could feel his anger turning into sadness quickly. 
He's so tired of this. He watches the way Sirius's face shifts through emotions at a rapid pace. I thought, I thought I'd lost you. Sirius admits quietly. Remus is silent for a good while after this. Come here, he says firmly and Sirius obeys, coming to stand in front of him. Gathering all his courage he holds out his hand. Sirius looks at it for a moment before slowly putting his hand to rest in Remus's. Remus has to take a moment longer just to appreciate the feeling of Sirius's hand in his again, and then he lowers it, and presses it right above the skin where the tattoo on his hip is. Sirius looks at where his hand is placed with furrowed eyebrows. I've always been yours. Remus whispers and presses Sirius's hand firmly on his hip before gripping the edge of his hand and peeling it back slightly to reveal the tattoo. Sirius can't see it yet, covered by the jumper Remus is wearing and he glances up at Remus and back down at where Remus holds his hand and back up, asking for permission. Remus nods and Sirius lowers himself into a crouch and lifts up the edge of Remus's jumper. Remus knows the exact moment Sirius realizes what it is because he releases a shaky exhale. Remus. He trails off staring at the Canis Major constellation printed in ink on Remus's skin. Sirius presses his thumb to where he shines the brightest, just below his navel and Remus sucks in a sharp breath. Sorry. Sirius amends, pulling his thumb away. Remus looks down to lock eyes with him and shakes his head. Don't be, he assures. Sirius looks back at the tattoo and the next thing Remus knows Sirius has pressed his lips to his star, kissing it and Remus gasps softly. Sirius stands slowly and now they're close. So close. Faces just inches apart, and Remus can feel the other's breath hit his skin. I have something similar, you know. He murmurs, Remus's lips part, and his eyes dart down to where Sirius has placed a hand on the left side of his chest. Show me, Remus whispers, eyes fixed on the spot. Sirius shifts back and reaches behind him to pull his shirt over his head and off in one swift motion. He lets it fall from his grip and Remus can see now where an array of stars covers the left side of his chest. There's another one just below that, differently shaped with a specific star highlighted. Remus reaches out and stops right before touching his skin. He looks up at Sirius and he nods. Looking back down he drags his fingers across the stars. What is it? He asks. Lupus. Sirius answers. The wolf constellation. And below it. That's Leo, the star's regulus. When'd you get them? He asks, going to pull his hand away, but Sirius grabs it and holds his hand firmly in his between them. Azkaban, ask and bribe the right guards and they'll do it for you. I got them because I thought it'd help me remember, remember you and Reg, but when I came back, I had no hint that any of it was real. I assumed I'd made it up. I'm sorry, Remus says, the words getting stuck in his throat and coming out broken. Sirius takes a deep breath and walks forward again, crowding into his space. I am too, he whispers. Sirius pulls on his hands, beckoning Remus towards him and he goes willingly, meeting Sirius halfway in a kiss that takes the breath from his lungs. He's drowning, drowning, drowning and he thinks he'd be quite happy to never come up for air again. But he does, because Sirius pulls away and they spend a moment looking at each other, just looking, basking in each other's presence. A long two years of nothing turning into something. Sirius places his hands on his chest and slides them down to Remus's abdomen. Remus closes his eyes against the feeling of his hand on his body again. Sirius. He breathes out and opens his eyes. Sirius stares at him and starts to go down until he reaches his knees. Oh, Merlin. Sirius looks downright breathless from this angle. Okay? Sirius asks reaching up to play with the hem of his tracksuit pants, the elastic stretches to accommodate the tips of his fingers to dip into the waistband. Okay, Remus whispers back. So okay. Sirius chuckles and pulls his tracksuit pants and boxers down in one go. Sirius ignores his hardening cock and goes straight to the tattoo on his hip, pressing open-mouthed kisses over every star, lingering the longest on Sirius. Remus lets out a shaky exhale. Mine. Sirius whispers and looks up at Remus through dark lashes. Remus nods. Yours, he echoes back. Always yours. Sirius hums and ducks his head to finally, 
finally touch him. He grips the base of his cock to lift it up to level with his mouth. Remus's mouth is dry and all he can do is watch as Sirius sticks his tongue out and licks a long stripe from base to tip. Oh, Remus groans. Oh fuck, fuck, fuck. Sirius. His words get cut short because suddenly the warm heat of Sirius's mouth envelopes his tip and he pushes forward, taking him in further. Merlin, you look so good from here, so good. Remus breathes out and Sirius hums, sending vibrations all throughout his shaft and Remus sucks in a sharp breath. He feels pressure building up in his stomach and he puts a hand on Sirius's shoulder, causing him to stall his movements. Don't want to finish yet. He explains and Sirius comes off with a pop, keeping eye contact with Remus as he stands up and kisses him, again. Open mouth and hot, Remus accepts what he's given gratefully and Remus pushes at his torso and they go stumbling backwards until Sirius's back hits the counter opposite them. Sirius detaches his mouth from Remus's and immediately latches onto his neck, sucking purple bruises into his skin and soothing them over with his tongue. Remus lets him tilting his head back to give him more access, and Sirius rolls his hips up and Remus grips his hips to help him. Warning, he mumbles, before lifting a hand and aiming it at Sirius's jeans. Evanesco. With nothing in between them anymore, their cocks rub together roughly. Sirius has to put his head in the crook of Remus's shoulder but still manages to murmur a wandless lubrication spell and then they're sliding together grinding against each other while Sirius pants into his shoulder and Remus lifts his hand to grip the back of his neck. Sirius makes a high-pitched noise in the back of his throat and Remus pulls back. Sirius groans in protest. No, Remus says and grips the back of his thighs and lifts him. Sirius's legs wrap around his waist and his lips make their way back to Remus's. Remus walks forwards until they hit a wall. Sirius huffs from the impact, and Remus bites his lip in apology and pulls away. Sirius mutters something under his breath he recognizes as a cleanse and preparation charm. Never lost your touch, did you? I do need to keep myself entertained, Mooney. Remus sighs shakily at the thought of Sirius fucking himself in the bedroom next to Remus's. It was never quite as good as you've ever been. Remus hums and reaches downward to circle Sirius's hole with a finger. Fuck, stop teasing, I'm not below begging right now, Sirius says, Remus continues to circle his hole. Ask nicely, Remus demands and Sirius lets out a huff of air in annoyance. He's trying to lower himself onto Remus but the werewolf holds him up firmly with one hand. You know better than that, Pads. Please, he eventually says, it's breathy and sounds like it took a lot of effort to say. Please, stop teasing. See, look how easy that was. Remus praises and pushes his finger past the tight ring of muscle. Sirius's mouth opens with a groan that never makes it past his lips. He thrusts his finger in and out a few times before Sirius groans in frustration. More, he demands and Remus is happy to comply. He pushes another finger in and scissors them inside him, stretching him out. He curls his fingers and Sirius gasps. There, 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 fuck right there. He gasps and Remus angles his fingers to hit that spot over and over again. Sirius makes noises that are sinful and Remus doesn't want him to stop but he pulls his fingers out anyway. Sirius starts to complain at the loss and then looks in between them where Remus has gripped his own dick to lube it up. Hurry up, Sirius says and Remus sends him a smirk. Be patient, I don't want it to hurt. Remus, I love that you care that much but I've been preparing myself for this for two years. Remus chuckles and aligns his dick with Sirius's hole before pushing up and into Sirius. They both let out a moan as Remus bottoms out and Remus adjusts his grip so he's holding Sirius up with both hands and starts moving. Sirius meets him halfway, moving with him as best as he can. They're both moaning and panting, chanting each other's names and Remus swears he can feel their souls reconnect and become one again shining bright inside them after years of being dull without each other. Good, Remus pants. So good for me, sweetheart, look at you. Sirius looks at him with lidded eyes, his mouth is open releasing whines, moans and Remus's name. His skin is flushed and his brow sweaty. Fucking beautiful, Remus murmurs and leans forward to suck a bruise onto his neck. 
Ah. Serious moans. Remus, Remus, Remus. He says with urgency, and Remus pulls back slightly to lean his forehead against Sirius's. Touch me. Remus reaches down in between them and grasps Sirius's cock in his hand. Oh, Merlin, yes. He says, Remus can feel the familiar coil in his stomach and leans forward to capture Sirius's lips in a kiss that's more tongue and teeth than lips. Close. He mumbles against Sirius's lips and he hums. Me too, keep going. Sirius finishes first, spilling cum onto Remus's hand who fucks him through his orgasm until he topples over the edge as well, chanting Sirius's name as if he were on his knees at church. Remus casts a cleaning charm and pulls out, Sirius hisses through the oversensitivity. Remus lowers him to the ground and as soon as Sirius can he reaches up again to pull him back into a kiss, softer, as if soothing everything over. Remus pulls back and cups Sirius's cheek. I love you, he whispers and Sirius beams up at him. I love you too. He pauses and looks around them. I don't know if I'll forgive you for vanishing my favorite pair of jeans, though. Remus laughs and nods. Of course. He holds a hand out. Compare it. Sirius's jeans come flying into his hand and he holds them out to him. Sirius takes them. Thank you. Sirius says and starts putting them back on. Any time. That being said. He holds his hand out again. Accio tracksuit pants. His pants which were discarded on the kitchen floor a good five meters from them also come rushing into his hands and he puts them on. I should go to bed. Sirius says and Remus sighs, shoving his hands into his pockets, unsure of where this stilted conversation came from. Me too. He says and they look at each other again. Sirius bites the corner of his mouth and Remus watches the movement before looking back up to meet Sirius's eyes. He rolls his eyes at his inability to not be awkward. Let's go then, he states, turning around and starting to walk towards his room. Let's. Sirius quotes with a hint of hopefulness attached to his voice. Yes, sweetheart, let's let us. Remus confirms, spinning around. Sirius's mouth splits into a smile. Remus mirrors it and holds out his hand. Sirius walks forward and reaches out towards him and Remus clasps their hands together, leading them to their bedroom. They wake up to Harry yelling. Siri! He yells out, his voice panicked and Sirius sits up abruptly, looking back at Remus with an expression that reflects Harry's tone of voice. Shit! He whispers and Remus can't help but laugh. Oh, find this funny to you. Remus shrugs and presses his lips together. What are we supposed to do? Well, he's bound to find out eventually, and you know what they say, there's no time like the present. Remus replies in a tone that communicates that he's amused by the whole situation. Siri, where are you? Harry's voice comes again, and it sounds a bit more desperate now. Sirius visibly gives up and accepts his fate. In Remus's room, he yells back. There's the sound of pattering feet, and then the door opens and Harry is standing at the entrance. Why are you in here? He asks and Remus has to bite back a laugh. He composes himself and sits up. Come here, love, he says and pats the bed. He approaches Remus's side of the bed and Remus hauls him up to set him in between Sirius and Remus. You know how your mum and dad were together. Harry nods again. Sirius and I are together now. Now. Harry questions and they both nod. You weren't together before. Sirius huffs out a laugh from next to him, and Remus glances at him briefly. We were, but a long time ago, we were apart for a little bit. He answers and Harry nods at this as if it's the most serious thing in the world and then turns to Sirius. Will you sleep in our... He asks in French and Sirius hums. We. Oui. Yes, he replies, also in French. D'accord. Okay. The call? Okay. Yes. Don't mind me, still here. Remus murmurs and Sirius raises an eyebrow at him. Yes, dear. He replies. All right. He suddenly announces. Breakfast, what do you want, has? Waffles. The five-year-old replies excitedly. Waffles it is. 
Sirius replies, taking Harry in his arms and standing to go into the kitchen. January 1993 Remus is sitting on the couch reading when he hears the screech of the owl. Knowing Sirius is in the kitchen making dinner with Harry, he doesn't bother to get up and continues to read, but there's a sound of something dropping and then... Dad! Harry yells from inside the kitchen, and Remus breathes out a long breath of annoyance and shuts his book. Yep, coming. He calls back and stands up, making his way into the kitchen. He goes through the doorway and looks at both Sirius and Harry expectantly. Well, he asks. Sirius waves his wand over the pot and lets go of the spoon as it continues to stir itself. There's a frying pan laying on the floor where it was dropped and Remus has to stop himself from immediately going over to pick it up. He nods to the letter in Harry's hand. Might want to read that, Sirius says with a barely contained smile on his face. Remus looks in between the two with matching broad grins and glances at the letter in Harry's hand, spotting half of the broken Hogwarts seal. What did you do? He asks accusatorily at Harry and his son gapes at him. Why do you think it was me? He says in an offended tone. Because that's what it usually is. He replies, mocking his tone. He takes the letter out of Harry's hand and flips it over. Dear Mr. Lupin and Mr. Black, reads Albus Dumbledore's handwriting. He glances up at Harry with raised eyebrows who lifts his arms in an I give up gesture and turns to Sirius. Jure and I jemise un moment de pay. I never have a moment's peace. He says to him and Sirius barks out a laugh. More Aussie pity. Me either, kid. Remus glances back down and continues to read. I write to request both your presences at Hogwarts School for Witchcraft and Wizardry from this year onwards as professors for defense against the dark arts, Mr. Lupin, and transfiguration, Mr. Black. What? Remus exclaims and snaps his head up to look at Sirius who laughs. Continue reading. He says, Remus looks back down. Mr. Lupin, while teaching at Hogwarts you'll be provided with Wolfsbane Potion so there will be no need for the shack. This will be brewed by Professor Snape. I understand if you have some concerns about that, but allow me to ease them. Severus is under my orders and deliberate tampering with the potion will result in hefty punishment. I do hope you consider and accept my offer if you have any questions about pay rates or working hours around a full moon for both you and Sirius, please feel free to owl me. Regards, Albus Dumbledore. Quite ridiculously, Remus feels laughter bubble up in his throat, he lets it out, and he just starts laughing. He can feel the concerned glances of Sirius, and Harry in front of him, but it just makes him laugh harder. Il va bien? Is he okay? Harry asks. Je n'en ai aucune idée. I have no idea. Sirius trails off. Remus, love, what's happening right now? Abruptly Remus feels tears blur his vision, and he looks up at them with a massive smile plastered on his face. I'm okay. He assures and lifts a hand to wipe under his eyes where the tears had just fallen. Oh my god. So are you guys teaching, or? Harry asks and Remus nods his head vigorously. Yes, yes, definitely yes, we are teaching. Remus replies and Harry smiles broadly. Thank Merlin, holidays are going to be so much easier now. Sirius says and Remus chuckles. I suppose they will be. Remus replies and walks over to his lover, who wraps an arm around him. Pulling him into a chaste kiss, Remus holds out his arm and Harry comes over. Sirius and Remus wrap an arm each around him. And in this memory... Remus hopes they'll never wither out. Venite. Thanks for listening to this text-to-speech podfic composed by Burning Aurora.